What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I've got some very specific clone fragrances that I want to talk to you guys about. So you hear about the popular stuff and when stuff gets hype, you know, some of these Middle Eastern clones because they're all the rave right now, you hear about those. But there's also some from these smaller, more independent houses that are cloning things that are doing some phenomenal work. Some of these are still Middle Eastern. I got a few. I got five is the point. Very specific. What I believe to be some hidden gems from five different clone houses that I think are worth checking out. So let's dive into them, stay tuned. So this first one comes from a brand out of Sweden. They use very high quality oils. Dare I say the highest quality aside from maybe one other fragrance. Of the five, this and one other are the highest quality that we're going to talk about today. This is from a company called Niche for All and we are talking about Pineapple Oak. So Pineapple Oak is somewhere in between, I guess so much going on in the background, somewhere in between Hachivat and Aventus. So it kind of dries more into Hachivat than it does Aventus, but it opens up very much Aventus. You get a lot of pineapple. You get a little bit of the birch here early on, but it dries into a bit more oak moss on my skin, which makes it more of Hachivat, because Hachivat from Nishane is all about the oak moss. It's much more of a Shepra to the nth degree than Creed Aventus is, and performance is fantastic, and honestly, this is one of the higher quality takes on either of those fragrances, because I have several clones of a, tons of Aventus, and a few different ones, like Hasivaz from uh, Alexandria Fragrances, for example. That's a really good take on Hachivat, but honestly, I would prefer Niche for All's take. They have several great offerings from the house, but I felt like this was the one to really feature because if you're maybe you're taking a look at their site and yes they do ship internationally to the states that's how i have it in the first place they're based out of sweden but let's say you're looking around the site and you want to try a couple samples you don't want to maybe dive into one of their three pack offerings which i have a few of their three pack offerings this is one that i think is easy to gravitate to to test out and see because usually if there's a really good take on aventus in some form or fashion they usually do a pretty good job on just about everything else and that's really the case here i would strongly encourage you to check out niche for all and when you're checking them out if you decide to whether purchase samples or do one of their three packs or get an individual individual bottle whatever you decide to do make sure this is in there because it's a great performer it's kind of a classier take on aventus because it's got a good bit of hachivat going on here as well it's called pineapple oak from niche for all now i have to say being in a warmer climate there is a newer rendition on one of my all-time, actually my all-time favorite clone. Let's call it what it is. It's from Sensual Obsessions. It's their clone of Andy Warhol. I've raved about it. I've got several different batch formulations from over the years, multiple bottles. But this newest one, it's fresher. It dials back the oud funk, cranks up the freshness. It's called King Andy. And you'll see there's a King Andy label here right on the side. It's a parfum. I want to say around 30% if I remember correctly, has a rendition of a translucent Tom Ford bottle, basically is what it looks like. This stuff is strong and it's fresh. It's more of a fresh yet very sweet plum. Dry wood, warm wood, a little bit of oud funk, but not near as much. There's much more animalistic tone to the oud. Like I said, it has that funkiness to it in the previous versions. And where I thought I actually did a live stream first impressions comparing this to the previous versions and I thought in that moment you know I, I still prefer that but I do appreciate this as time's gone on as this is macerated this is the superior version and it's easier to get a hold of now it's kind of the standard bearer for Andy Warhol clones from Central Obsessions and still the main fragrance I would suggest you check from them not everybody's heard of Central Obsessions a lot of you watching this channel have I've been talking about them for many years now uh, on and off and Andy Warhol is always the consistent when I speak of Sensual Obsessions and this is the newest version it's the freshest version which I think a lot of you would appreciate especially in warmer climates like I'm living now if you're looking for the best plum fragrance of all time bond number nine's Andy Warhol is that in my opinion but Sensual Obsessions also in my opinion has always made the best interpretation so I would strongly suggest you check out 
Essential Obsessions, this is King Andy. Now, unfortunately, one of the better YSL Loam flankers to ever come out got discontinued about two years ago at this point, year and a half, two years ago. We're talking about Loam Ultime. Fortunately, there's a slightly more ginger heavy version out there from Michael Dinsmore over at the brand Making Sense. This is called Warrior. Yes, there's a play on the Ultimate Warrior because Ultime Warrior is kind of the route he was going for. Don't get me wrong, I love the look and the color and the thought process here, but Ultime Warrior, a little cheesy, Mikey, but that's okay. You made a phenomenal fragrance worth talking about that's a hidden gem. So some of you have heard me talk about his rendition of Roger Parfum's Oceania, Triton. I still say check that out. His version of Prada Loam called Iris Man. Check that out. Fallen Leaf, his you know fall concoction that's a variety of inspired fragrances. Check that out too. But if you want something that hasn't really gotten any love that really should, if you, say, don't want to pay the prices for Loam Ultime, here's a longer lasting version. It's not as bright in the opening because it is a much higher oil concentration. It's an x -ray. It's above 25%. I'm sure it's above 30. No one might. I'm not exactly sure what the oil concentration is. It wears a little heavier than YSL Loam Ultime, but smells pretty accurate. It's a little less on the rose, a little bit more on the ginger and the woods, but you still it's clearly Loam Ultime. I would say it's every bit 90%, maybe even a little bit better of Loam Ultime. Because like I said, there's such a great choice of options from making sense. Some of you watching this, you're very familiar and you've tried many, op many offerings from them, but you might not have checked this one out, especially you wrestling fans. I mean, you can't help but enjoy the homage to the ultimate warrior may jim helwig rest in peace or warrior as he changed his name to I, I still can't believe he did that but may he rest in peace iconic figure i love the inspiration here but the main point is it smells pretty accurate to lomo team and if you've been on the hunt for it this is definitely a hidden gem that will scratch that itch and curve what you're looking for with that scent profile again that's making sense warrior one i haven't talked about in a while and Using the Rolly Canvas has me going back to this series. I have two in this fragrance from Al Haramon in their portfolio series. I still think this is the closest it gets to Parfums de Marley Pegasus. This is called Royale Stallion. Royale Stallion is the other fragrance that I was talking about is of the highest quality in this video. That's one thing I've always appreciated about Al Haramon is their quality is up there. When it comes to these affordable Middle Eastern clone houses, it's always been up there. It's milky and lactonic. It's got that cooling, bitter almond, creamy tone. Lot, loads of heliotrope. It's spot on. I mean spot on. Super, super beastly powerful too. I reviewed this back in the first quarter of 2020 before lockdown. That's how long ago I reviewed this one. Uh, God, it's just engulfing the airspace right here. If you like Pegasus, I know some of you will say I'm off craze. I haven't smelled that one. I've had a lot of people recommend that. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit more affordable than this, but I'm willing to bet the quality is a big difference here because most, I mean, all the Armoff fragrances I have, a lot of them smell really good. And I recommend a lot of them, but typically they are the cheaper smelling version when I have, say, Afnan's version of the same fragrance or Haramine's version of the same fragrance. And I'm willing to bet Armoff Craze is the same situation versus Al Haramine's Royal Stallion. You're going to pay more for this one, probably at least double what you're going to pay for Armoff Craze. But this is going to be the one. Performance is not a question, I'm sure, with either. Performance is beastly on this and the quality. That's what I keep going back to. Is the quality of the bottle looks really cool? Obviously, that's not the most important thing. But if you're looking for what I believe to be the ultimate clone hiding under the radar of Parfums de Marley Pegasus, you want Al Haramine's portfolio series, Royale Stallion. Now this next one, I just started revisiting. I've had it for a while. It's a clone of my wife's favorite. She's got two, two scent DNAs that are her favorite. Silver Mountain Waters DNA and Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. Well... Alexandria's got a high-performing spot-on take of Fierce that does not get talked about. We hear about Mont Blanc Legend and all the versions. Parfums de Marley Percival. There's tons of more affordable cheapies and designers. Mercedes-Benz Man, Man Intense. And so. There's a bunch that smell like it. 
But the one that deserves the spotlight that really is a carbon copy with high level performance is Alexandria Fragrance's Ferocity. This is about as spot on as they get. I just started revisiting it. It's been a while since I sprayed it. And this is the fragrance that actually sparked this video idea in the first place. Because you may have never given this one a chance because there's just so many fragrances out there that smell like fierce. But I'm telling you guys, this is easily, we'll give that a spray right here on this hand, easily the closest fragrance I have to fierce. It literally smells like a an X straight version, which it is. It's an extra de parfum version of Fierce. You get that cologne synthetic smell, that 90s, early 2000s cologne smell, Calion, cologne, however you say it. Uh, musky, fresh and spicy, woodsy, has that synthetic nature to it. Like it smells very accurate to Fierce. It smells like an Abercrombie quality fragrance. Just cranked up oil concentration is basically how you can look at it. This is. It's spot on. Next time you're shopping around on Alexandria Fragrance's website, let's say you're going for some new version of this or that or whatever, because they're always cloning new stuff. They got a bunch of great originals. Big fan of Alexandria, always have been. Get a sample and try this one. Even if you've got four or five other fragrances that smell like fierce, there's a really good chance that this becomes your favorite. And you won't have to spend Percival money. Because aside from this, Percival is the way to go. But this is much more affordable than getting Parfums and Marley Percival. I can assure you of that. You want beastly Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce, and I mean carbon copy type of stuff here, you're going to want to check out Alexandria Fragrance's Ferocity. In my opinion, it's slept on. Well, that's the five that I wanted to discuss with you today. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. Have any of you watching this tried any of these five? What do you think about them? I mean, I can't be the only one. I'm sure somebody watching this has tried each of these. And what do you think about them? I'm very curious on your thoughts down below, or if this is the first time you're hearing about them, did any of these spark your interest to where you feel like you need to try them out for yourself? Definitely let me know down in the comments as well. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these five and you give them a spray now, it's a real good chance you'll thank me later because these are kind of flying under the radar. Have a good one, guys.